We've set out to overthrow functioning constitutional democracies in over 20 countries. We manipulated elections in dozens of countries. We created standing armies and directed them to fight. We went after to organize ethnic minorities to encourage them to revolt. The first thing we did in Nicaragua was to go to the Mosquito Indians, who had never gotten along with the other people in Nicaragua very well, and give them more money than they had seen in the entirety of history, and arms and training and rationales and sanctuaries in Honduras, and sent them into Nicaragua to attack, kill, fight, rape, burn, pillage. And this is an insidious thing. Every society is torn with racial conflicts and conflicts with minorities. Think how violent our nation is. Think what if there were a super, super power so big that we didn't dare even flat back or strike back at them that were coming to our minorities with huge sums of money and arms and, and, and training people from our minority groups and sending them into the country to do open acts of violence how we would rise up and the bloodbath that would ensue. And this has been a technique the CIA has used in Nicaragua, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Laos, in the Congo, in, in Iran, Iraq with the Kurds in different parts of the world. We created, trained, and funded death squads like the Treasury Police in El, El Salvador that are responsible for killing as many as 70,000 people according to the count of the Catholic Church. And we've assassinated world leaders, including the United States president in 1963. And I'll get to that in more detail in just a moment. Getting back to the subject of democracy, since that, that's something that Bush and everyone is talking about right now, uh, I remind you of Chile. In 1973, the CIA organized the overthrow of Salvador Allende, the democratically elected president of Chile. And he was killed in the process, and we killed General Schneider, who was the pro-U.S defender of the Constitution there, in order to put the CIA's representative Pinochet in power. And Henry Kissinger's, when he was grilled by the Congress over this program, his rationale was, yes, the issues are much too important for the Chilean voters to be left to decide for themselves. Now, there was a long CIA destabilization and propaganda campaign against China. We were parachuting teams from Kemoi Matsu, uh, Tibet, Burma, Thailand to destabilize China with the propaganda campaign, the propaganda aimed at the United States as well as uh, China and other parts of the world until eventually we talked ourselves into the Korean War in which a million people were, where we fought China and Korea and a million people were killed. There was a long CIA destabilization and propaganda campaign against Vietnam until we talked ourselves into going into Vietnam to fight and two million people were killed. Again, read for yourselves. Read Bill Blum's book, The CIA of Forgotten History. Read Portrait of a Cold Warrior by Joseph Burkholder Smith, who was a CIA case officer in Southeast Asia. Read Fire in the Lake by Frances Fitzgerald, the daughter of Desmond Fitzgerald, the famous CIA chief of operations of Southeast Asia. Read Deadly Deceits by Ralph McGeehy, another case officer who served in Southeast Asia. Read Decent Interval by Frank Snap, who covered the period of time in Vietnam, 73, 75. He and I were colleagues there at that time. Or if you will, read my own book, In Search of Enemies, by Norton, which remains the only insider's detailed account of the, of the inner functionings of a covert action. Or read Washington's War on Nicaragua, by Holly Sklar, not written by an insider, but a remarkable detail on the Nicaraguan operation, great detail of how that operation has been run trying to come to grips with these CIA activities and these broad numbers, trying to figure out how many people have been killed. You can count it up different ways. You can never be sure how many people are killed in the jungles of, of Laos or the hills of Nicaragua. But adding them up as best we can, we come up with a figure of six million people killed, minimum figure. It has to be more than that. A million in the Korean War, two million in the Vietnam War, 800,000 in Indonesia, a couple of million in Cambodia, 20,000 in Angola, the operation I was part of, 22,000 in Nicaragua, again the figure the New York Times cites. You're dealing with large numbers of people who died who would not have died if our tax dollars had not been spent by the CIA to exacerbate situations and destabilize and set people to fighting. So you began to analyze these figures to figure out who, who, who are these six million people we've killed. And again, that's a minimum figure. The conservatives tell us it's a dangerous world. 
Our enemies have to die so we can be safe and secure. Some of them say, I'm sorry about that, but that's the way the world is. We have to accept this reality. So you begin to study these things and rip through them and analyze them and break them apart, and you find some shocking common denominators come out to you. Namely, for example, since 1954, we do not parachute teams into the Soviet Union to destabilize the country in a brutal way. Coincidentally, 1954 was the first year the Soviets developed their actual capability of actually dropping atomic weapons on the United States. Uh, for other reasons, we don't do these things in England, France, Sweden, Norway, Belgium, Switzerland, etc. These things are all done in countries of the third world where the governments don't have the power to force the United States to stop destabilizing the country and brutalizing their people. These six million people killed are people of the Mitumba Mountains of the Congo and the jungles of Southeast Asia and the hills of northern Nicaragua. Conspicuously, they're people who don't have ICBMs or armies or navies. They don't have any capability of doing physical hurt to the United States. The 22,000 killed in Nicaragua, for example, they're conspicuously not Russians. They're not Cuban soldiers or advisors. They're not even percentage-wise mostly Sandinistas. They're mostly rag-poor peasants, including a high percentage of women and children. Communists? I'm sorry, they're mostly Roman Catholics. Enemies of the United States? I can't give you that one either because we have all these witnesses who've gone down to live in their villages with them and they invariably come back to testify that the Nicaraguans are the warmest people on the face of the earth and they love people from the United States and they simply cannot understand why we would want, our leaders would want to rationalize spending a billion dollars on a contra force to go into their villages to kill them and mutilate them while their families are forced to watch. 